So we're now going to look at space-time diagrams. Space-time diagrams are a useful way of presenting information about objects which are travelling at relativistic speeds. So by relativistic speeds, I mean speeds close to the speed of light. So above about one one hundredth of the speed of light. So what a space-time diagram has is two axes, a spatial axis, which we'll call the x-coordinate, and a temporal axis with units ct. Now, why would we choose ct instead of t? Well, this makes light really easy to show on our diagram. For a light ray, we can write down, well, x is equal to ct because the speed of the light ray is c. And so on our space-time diagram, the light travels along lines like this, which make an angle of 45 degrees with both the vertical and the horizontal axis. So they have a gradient of 1. Now consider a light which is turned on at point P. It travels into the future and it can travel in both directions, the positive x direction and the negative x direction. So we can represent the light being switched on at P like this. Now this actually has a special name. This is the light cone of point P. And well, why do we care about light cones? Let's consider two events. Let's start with event 1, which is shown here. Now event 1 is within the light cone of point P. What that means is that there has been time for the light from P to reach event 1. So it is possible for P and event 1 to be causally related. So what we mean there is it is possible that P caused event 1. Let's consider a second event, event 2, which is outside the light cone as shown. Now, event 2 can't be causally related to P, as there just isn't time for the light to travel from P to the location where event 2 takes place in the time indicated. So it's absolutely impossible for point P and event 2 to be causally related. Another nice thing to show on space-time graphs is world lines. So world lines represent how something moves through time. So I've been standing here for quite some time now, so my x coordinate has not changed. So my world line on a space time graph could be represented this way. Another thing we want to be able to do is to relate two different reference frames as we've been doing previously. So if we have reference frame S and reference frame S prime, which is moving with a speed u as measured from reference frame S, let's have a look at how we could draw the axes for our primed frame on the axes for our unprimed frame. Okay, so here's our axis in the S frame and S prime is moving in X direction with speed u as measured from s. And what we want to do is work out, well, how do we draw the axes for s dash on this diagram? So first of all, let's just be really clear what the axes are. This axis here, the x-axis, has the equation ct is equal to 0. This axis here, the ct axis, has the equation x is equal to zero. So the s prime axes will be ct prime is equal to zero, that will be the x prime axis, and x prime is equal to zero, that will be the ct prime axis. So to relate these two, we'll need to use our Lorentz transform. So we've got t prime, is equal to t minus ux on c squared over the square root of 1 minus u squared on c squared and we're going to want c t prime is equal to 0. So let's times this all by c and we can set it equal to 0. So what we have 
Now what we can do is just take this part of it and we'll multiply through by 1 minus u squared on c squared and because this side's zero, this part just disappears. So we end up with ct minus ux on c is equal to zero, which we can write as ct is equal to u over c x. So this is our y and this is our x. So u on c is the gradient of this line. So line with gradient u on c. So we can draw that on our diagram over here like this. This is the x prime axis and the gradient is equal to u on c. Okay, let's do our next axis. Our next axis is x dash equals zero, which is the ct axis, ct prime axis, sorry. So we've got x dash, which is equal to x minus ut over the square root of one minus u squared on c squared is equal to zero. Again, we'll just take this part of it, multiply both sides by the square root of one minus u squared on c squared, and we end up with x minus ut is equal to zero. So we can write this as well, x is equal to ut. Now we want this in terms of quantities on our axis. So we will actually both multiply and divide by c. So we can do this as u over c times ct. Because the c is multiplied here and divided here, so we're times in by one, so that doesn't change it. Okay, so what we want is this in the form of y equals mx. So we'll write this as ct, just rearranging. ct is equal to c over u x. So this is a line with a gradient c on u. So once again, we can draw this onto our diagram here. This and this angle are equal. This is the ct prime axis and the gradient is equal to c over u. Now let's also just draw the speed of light here. This is our light ray traveling this way and you can see this is symmetric about this light ray as well. We suggest that the light ray will appear similarly in the two frames traveling at a speed c. Now we will be using these space-time diagrams and this set of axes here when we consider simultaneity.